Coast to Coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. I'll be your host today on this Wednesday, June 25th, 2014. Going very quickly. We're about halfway through 2014. Today, we've had a landmark decision, I think, from the Supreme Court. They actually endorsed the Fourth Amendment. Who would have thought that the Supreme Court would endorse the Fourth Amendment? We're going to be talking about that, and we're going to be talking about the police state. We're going to have Paul Joseph Watson joining us at the bottom of this hour. In the third hour, we're going to be joined by uh, Cheryl Chumley, and we'll talk about the book that she wrote, Police State USA. And Alex Jones is going to be joining us in the second hour with a report about the America being destroyed by design. This is all connected. It's not that uh, we have Homeland Security that is pushing this police state on local police departments, the Defense Department equipping them with mine-ready uh, vehicles that we see everywhere. It's not just that kind of militarization. It's also Homeland Security has the control of the borders. They're the ones who are standing down at the border. They have control of border patrols. They have control of ICE. And they also have control of the TSA, where they are not standing down. So what is this all about? This is a planned design. This is treason. And that's what Alex Jones is going to be talking about in the second hour as he joins us. And, of course, we're going to have uh, updates on what's going on with the collapsing borders. But today, primarily, we're going to be talking with Paul Joseph Watson and Cheryl Chumley about the other aspect of it. And that is, how do they treat us within the borders? Well, it's a police state. Just uh, yesterday evening, we had an article from Infowars.com that Paul Joseph Watson wrote. We're going to talk to him about it. It's picked up on Drudge. Woman says DHS forced her to strip naked at gunpoint during a terrifying dawn raid. Yeah, see, the problem is, is that our police state is essentially stripping us all naked in our person, places, effects, our data. They are constantly watching everything we do, and we are not allowed to even look them in the eye, just like this lady. They handcuff us, put us on the floor, and tell us to shut up and don't look at them. We're tired of this. We're not going to put up with this. It's amazing for me to see, as we got Cheryl Chumley, and we're going to be talking about her book, Police State USA. It's amazing to see an article from The Guardian today talking about the very same thing. Of course, she documents this going way back, documents it very, very thoroughly. But this article from The Guardian that came up today is talking about the exact same thing, the militarization of the police force. They start out with a case of a family that was hit with a SWAT team raid. They threw a flashbang grenade in the baby's crib. We've talked about this when it, it first came out. Uh, have critically injured that baby, uh, throwing a grenade in its crib. This is the type of thing that's happening. If this was only happening once, if it was only the baby with the flashbang grenade in the crib, we should do something about it. If it was only this lady who was stripped naked, by the Homeland Security people, a SWAT team, coming into her home, trashing her home, not telling her what it's about. That's the other aspect of the police state. You're not allowed to know why they're doing anything. They won't give you any answers. She still doesn't have answers. People who have been put on the no-fly list still don't have answers as to either why they were put on or when they were taken off, why they were taken off. We covered the story, one of the first stories when I came here back in October 2012 was about Wade Hicks, who was... Uh, on his way to uh, Japan to see his wife on a military plane. He was taken off of that plane in Hawaii, not given a reason. This was a guy who had uh, just recently before he traveled, he had been, this was on a, a Department of Defense plane. He had been vetted by Homeland Security itself, had a special pass as a worker. He was taken off. Eventually, he's taken off the plane and stranded for days in Hawaii because he couldn't get anywhere from there without flying. And so, Eventually, he was taken off of that list. He was eventually brought back to the U.S., but he never got an explanation as to why he was put on or even if he was, in fact, taken off. 
That's the kind of police state we have. And today, there's been some key Supreme Court decisions, and we're going to talk about that. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Grew. It took me 20 years of searching the globe to find the deposit of the highest purity iodine available. The new Survival Shield X2 is mined from 7 to 10,000 feet below the earth in pristine, environmentally clean conditions. The iodine crystals we use are extracted from an ancient 300 million plus year old deposit deep in the earth. It's the strongest nascent iodine on the market today. It delivers 650 micrograms per drop. Experience the new formula. Experience the ancient purity. Shield your family. Survival Shield X2, available now at InfoWarsLife.com. X2 from InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. What do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security by sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. If you watch, the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the InfoWar to the next level. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. Most people know that iodine deficiency has been a crisis around the world. Iodine is key to so many of the body's functions, especially the thyroid. I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfoWarsLife.com. Crashing through the lies and disinformation, it's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this Wednesday, June 25th, 2014. Today we have an amazing Supreme Court decision, and it was unanimous. They unanimously upheld the Fourth Amendment. Didn't think I would ever live to see it. But that's good news, and we're going to talk about that, what it means for you, and some of the um, some of the inherent contradictions now that are left hanging out there. But before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Hillary Clinton, about the lifestyles of the rich and infamous. You know, the Mail Online just pointed out today that she's getting $225,000 to speak at the University of Las Vegas, the University of Nevada in Las Vegas. That's happening at the same time that the university just announced a 4% tuition increase for those same students. And they're kind of seeing the, uh, the cognitive dissonance of this. You know, here, here's this person who loves to put herself out there as someone who is for the little person standing up against the wealthy elite. She said she was dead broke when she and Bill left uh, the presidency, um, the co-presidency, I guess. And yet, here she is, the same person, and the Clinton Foundation has gotten half of a billion dollars 
half a billion dollars from Goldman Sachs alone for their Clinton Foundation. They have fundraisers at the Goldman Sachs headquarters for their Clinton Foundation. I'm reminded of what I think it was H.L. Uh, Minkin. It might have been uh, Mark Twain. I don't know. He said, elections are advanced auctions of stolen goods. Well, that certainly is the case in this case with uh, Hillary Clinton. Now, they say, of course, that this $225,000 that she's getting to speak to the University of uh, Nevada at Las Vegas, that money will not go into the Clinton fund. That's going to go to her personally. Now, we have an article up on Infowars.com. It says if the Clintons are worth $50 million, why do they get nearly a million dollars a year from the taxpayers? This is by Michael Schneider, Economic Collapse. He says since leaving the White House, the Clintons have earned at least $100 million and currently have a net worth of $50 million. So why do we need to give him $944,000 a year to fund his extravagant lifestyle? And he points out that it's not just Bill Clinton. It's also George W. Bush, who actually gets more. He actually gets $1.28 million a year. And listen to the kind of stuff that W. spends his money on. He spends $102,000 for telephone expenses in 2014. $135,000 more on furniture, computer, office supplies, and other miscellany. I left it there as a pause for that to sink in. $102,000 in phone expenses. And as he points out, Michael Schneider points out in his article, does W. have the world's worst calling plan? <laughs> How do you spend $102,000 on phone calls? I don't know. But then he also points out that other members of royalty, uh, Obama has 469 senior staff who work directly under him. 226 of them make more than $100,000 a year. His dog handler for the family dog, Bo, reportedly makes $102,000 a year. There you go. Guess we are going to the dogs. But, uh, you know... Will and Kate of the UK are just remodeling their one of their palaces, and they're spending four million pounds. But they said, "Don't worry, we paid for it ourselves." <laughs> Where did they get that money? I mean, you know that that kind of uh, kind of brings back uh, memories of Obama's. You didn't build that. You know, they didn't earn that money, and I don't think the Clintons have really earned this money either. It just strikes at the hypocrisy, and hopefully, the people who would tend to vote for someone like Hillary, who would be taken in by her rhetoric, would be wise enough to see this. We're also going to be talking about the hypocrisy, not today, but we're going to, uh, we talked about this on Sunday with uh, Alex Jones. We talked about the hypocrisy of Hillary appealing to women. They're all about seeing a woman in the White House, and yet information has surfaced about Hillary Clinton. One of the early things that she did when she was just a 27-year-old lawyer, how she got off a rapist, a pedophile rapist who had raped a 13-year-old girl, caused her to have health problems the rest of her life. And the audio tape has now surfaced of that and gone viral, where you can actually hear Hillary Clinton laughing about the fact, hey, this guy actually passed a lie detector test that destroyed my confidence forever in polygraphs. She knew this guy was guilty. She got him off on technicalities and she laughed about it. Okay, we've heard this story about Hillary Clinton many, many times about how she has been the war on women. And yet, this is, I think, the most damaging thing, the hypocrisy of the Hillary Clinton candidacy, the fact that she thinks that she's for the people, think she's for the little people, people think she's for women's rights, nothing of the sort. She is a corrupt elitist, just like Obama, just like George W. Bush. Now, I was talking about the Supreme Court decision, and we're going to be talking about the police state predominantly today. We're going to have Paul Joseph Watson joining us at the bottom of the hour. We're going to be talking in the third hour to Cheryl Chumley, who wrote a book, Police State USA, cataloging what has been happening to our country, where it is going, what we can do about it. We're going to be talking to her in the third hour, and Alex Jones is going to be tying a lot of this together because, you know, it's Homeland Security that runs not only the police state and pushes that at the local level but they, of course, are in charge of our borders. And so Alex Jones is going to be joining us in the second hour where they report treason, America destroyed by design. But as we're talking about the, the police state, let's look at the Supreme Court decision that came out today. Up on Infowars.com, we see an article here from uh, Stephen Dynan at the Washington Times. Supreme Court bans warrantless cell phone searches. This just came out. They ruled today that police cannot go snooping through people's cell phones without a warrant. And a unanimous decision that he says 
amounts to a major statement in favor of privacy rights. It's a 21st century update to the legal understanding of privacy rights. It is long, long overdue. And when I look at this, and I look at their past record of things that they've decided, as USA Today pointed out when they covered this story,